right time to show you the van I'm guessing okay a bit difficult to to get a decent shot in here because it's quite tiny just to show you the the kitchen the gubbins there's a fully working gas stove with electronic ignition been brilliant I've cooked lots on that in the last couple of days and then over this side just move this tray of things we have fully operational sink with pumped water I've just now wet everything that's in the bowl but never mind saves having to break your back lifting big the window cupboards it's surprising how much these will hold the top one we tend to keep all our canned goods in and dry rice flavorings etc those cans by the way are double stacked one in front of the other in and in the bottom one we have a bit of an all sorts cupboard so we've got tea and coffee and little tupperwares and at the end the little square canister here has got all our chargers in so anything that you need to do with charging your phones or your gadgets or anything up is all in that little box there. We charge our USB lights up as well. Coming over to this side, this top cupboard, that's dedicated to everything to do with washing. So in the orange bags, all your shower gels, sun cream, shampoos, and these here are little micro towels. They're excellent. It'll carry more towels, like a big um, chamois lever really. But they work and they're small, so they pack down nicely. Again in the bottom, it's odds and sods of food. Bickies, cakes and things. So in this Chapel Motor Homes double conversion, you get two of these bench seats. And in this slightly larger one, it's wider than the driver's side one, we keep our sleeping bags. I like an inner bag as well, just to keep warm. And we have two packing cubes here with all our clothing in. So the secret is to have things that will squish down so that will go into any sort of space. If you have boxes, then it makes it more difficult. So both the sleeping bags are in the compression sacks. So on the opposite bench, which is slightly narrower on the driver's side, we're having a bit of a, an all sorts cupboard. So we've got an extra ground sheet in the tent carpet there. We've got an extra tarp, toiletries, and there is actually quite a bit of room at this end for food. So I uh, haven't got much dry goods in there. There's a loaf of bread under there at the moment, but I haven't been shopping yet, so we'll probably put our cereals, etc. in that one. That one, by the way, is also where we keep the table base and the leg. You can see we've got it set up slightly strangely because Bernie and I don't have a roof box and we thought how are we going to carry those Chapel Motorhomes huge boards without a roof box so we came up with an idea. So this is where we've made a few changes to the way that the, the bed board system works and as you can see it makes an excellent space for the dog on the seat at the other side you can actually put things on top of as you're moving stuff around which you find you will do is excellent for that that there this long one is actually as it would be when it's made up as a bed so we don't change anything in that corner we tend to put a lot of stuff in a cargo net up top it's handy for shoving in the blinds or any clothing that you're going to be wearing the next day when you go to bed So we're now going to make um, the bed up for night time. So these cushions, both of these, are actually what make the beds up. So this is what Bernie came up with. It's just a couple of pieces of wardrobe shelving from B&Q. Cost us four quid each because they're in the sale. We've covered them top and bottom with the anti-slip matting. So that, that just sort of gives you underneath so that it doesn't slip off because there's not much of a ridge we've put some 
really strong Velcro. And you just slide that cushion back over, drop this one down, and there you have another bed. It's ideal. So when it comes to bedtime, we still put in the table onto the designed lips as it's meant to go. That just slots in there and we, we just pull it slightly forward and the little infill section at the back we pull that slightly forward and this is the infill cushion. We'll just pop that into there like so. And then you've got your full double bed as normal, where your shoulders and your hips are, where the widest part of your body is. And you just need the extra bits on the end to put your feet on. Oh. And we've slept like this now for how many nights? Three? Three. Three nights. Super cosy. Then in the morning when it's time to get up, obviously you're limited with the floor space and you need to be able to put your knees down. So I kind of just drop them down in the little bit of space between the two boards. Pull this section out, stand it up there, and do everything in reverse. So the only issues are still lying in bed there as I do that. And what that means can both put your feet down the middle aisle so you can get dressed. We found this has worked very well so far. I'm sure there'll be other ways of doing things and better ways of doing things, but this is fab. Far easier than having to get boards out of a roof box. And we can keep the cushions in here as well. Excellent. So regards to these bed boards, so we've just said that Blue, thank you for getting in on the act. <laughs> These bed boards, we've just said that the reason we did it this way is because we don't have a roof box. So we didn't have anywhere to store the boards that come with the Chapel Homes conversion. But what we actually do with these, because they're just 40 centimetres wide, um, not quite sure, I think they're 600 long, we just take them out, turn them over lengthways and stand them up behind the passenger seat when we're driving. And the extra cushions, we leave the bed mode set up at the back here with the table in because the dog travels on the back. And then we put the spare cushions, the bed cushions, this one and this one, just loosely on the top because they're not going to do any damage to anybody if we break suddenly, not like anything major. Right, it's getting pretty chilly at night, so you're probably wondering what we do for heating. We've not been off electric hookup yet because we're just trialling it out so we're on campsite so we do have the benefit of mains power. So during the day we use this little fan heater, it plugs directly into the main socket when I can get it to work. There we go. And it's more than enough, it's fantastic. It's also great for toasting your feet when they get cold. So it didn't take long for our blue to discover the heater. I think we can say that's um, A1 first class for warming said dog. Is that nice blue? Hey, you found your spot. Hmm? The heater. And at night we actually have an extension that runs to the mains power socket on the side of the van and it runs to this very small um, oil filled radiator. We got it from Screwfix and it was £20 I think. Last night it was toasty and warm in here. It was brilliant. I'm beginning to realise that one of my favourite words seems to be brilliant. If you leave a lot of knickknacks out like we tend to do, you go to bed, you leave your phone and your, maybe your makeup or toiletries bag and you tend to put them on the back shelf here. Put them on a tray. That way, if you need to move it from one side to the other, it's quick as that. 
because you're going to need them to get into the cooker well before you even get into the cooker if you put them over here you're going to have to move them to get into the sink to get the water to fill the kettle so little things like that really make things a bit easier instead of having to faff about having to move every single thing just a little tip